Today, the nation's highest court took up challenges to Biden's vaccine and testing mandates. The justices are pressed for the question of whether to temporarily block the mandates or hold them in place. And if the justices do choose to allow the mandates, companies will face fines as early as February. NTD's Melina Wisecup brings us more. Justices heard challenges over two of Biden's vaccine and testing mandates. The first mandate applies to health care workers across the nation. It essentially requires health care providers to have their workers vaccinated or face Medicaid and Medicare funding being pulled from them. The second challenge is over Biden's vaccine or testing mandate that applies to private businesses, and this impacts over 100 million U.S. workers. And for these rulings, the stakes are high. You know, when we put these very strict requirements on at a federal level, we're really tying the hands uh, and having consequences downstream on the ground that's leading to massive staffing shortages, uh, that's shutting down the economy. And I think I think it's very tough territory. OSHA, the federal agency that would enforce the vaccine or testing mandate, argued to the justices that it's their responsibility to keep workers safe. So the mandate is needed. The secretary here cited overwhelming scientific and medical evidence that the grave danger exists based on how this virus is transmitted anywhere people gather indoors together. And that applies to a lot of workplaces, but that just turns on the nature of how this virus is communicable between people. She also notes that it's not a vaccine mandate since companies can opt out for a regular testing option instead. But the other side argues that it's not a matter of if companies should take steps to prevent the spread of COVID-19. It's whether a federal agency can impose those kinds of requirements. They're trying to set a blanket wide economy wide policy by an emergency rule. OSHA does not have that power. Thank you. The two dozen states and multiple businesses in the suit argue the decision should be left up to the states. An attorney in the healthcare industry tells us he sympathizes with local control, especially in the politics of today. Um, and we're, in, I think, in a moment of time where the country is deeply polarized, that it's not a terrible thing for there to be variation and, and flexibility for different states to take different approaches. I think a lot of the challenge here is that we've moved so quickly uh, at every step. And, 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 and I think the more that the, there's time taken uh, to, to reflect and make sure that we're doing the right thing, We'll find the right balance. But Some justices also pondered whether this mandate opens the door to letting OSHA impose other medical requirements on employees in the future. The justices mostly seemed skeptical of Biden's mandate on private businesses. But it may be a close call for Justices Kavanaugh and Barrett. And it's not a black and white question. Um, and I think that I think they take their work seriously. And I think they are going to be concerned about, you know, taking to, um, you know, taking taking too uh, streamlined or simplified of an approach. Melina, this was an emergency hearing brought to the Supreme Court today. Uh, when can we expect to have a final ruling on these vaccine and testing mandates? Steve, the court is really under a lot of pressure to act quickly here, considering the deadline for those private businesses to implement the mandates is this coming Monday. And considering the scope and complexity of the arguments presented here today, it's unlikely that the justices will have an official ruling by then, but they could. Now, it's also important to note that this is just the start of this uphill battle. Even if the court does rule to block Biden's mandate, it's only a temporary block, and the justices will have to take up these arguments again in the future. Now, if the court does choose to uphold Biden's mandates, non-complying businesses will start to see fines as early as February. Steve? Thanks, Melina.